The night before the races, and this guy is ready to fall over. Guys, it's been the most stressful seven or ten days. I don't even know how many days have passed, but since the day that engine arrived, I've been trying to, you know, it's been like Operation get this goddamn truck up and running and ready to rock and roll and engine broken in so that I can get a good night's sleep Friday night, the night before I gotta get up in the morning and drive three hours and I'll be good to go. Well, <laughs> seven hours from now I gotta be on the road, pack this stuff up, but of course be on the road, three hour drive and pray that this thing just does me right because the last two times I've done this, I've had, I've had issues. And so from the from the jump, this has been, I mean, who knows, maybe it's because I'm having a rush, maybe it's just, you know, part of it's bad luck, um, the part of it's me being new. Long story short, I've had an absolute nightmare. Um, I, I was able to get it broken in as far as the heat cycles are concerned. Of course, I got the tires mounted up, they look great, didn't have any issues there, but the... Um, those of you guys that, that aren't familiar with this engine, the G320 in the in the low C, uh, in the 5T platform, the flywheel cover has to be changed. You can't use the, the G320 flywheel cover because the uh, the bolt holes aren't, they don't line up properly. So I tried to use my um, my quick release flywheel, uh, flywheel cover, but the G320 pull start does not fit it. I tried everything. I even dremeled out the bottom of it a little bit so that it would fit because the G320 pull start is just a tiny bit smaller than the traditional King Motor or Roven pull start in, uh, in height and width. So I used my Roven pull start on there. And of course, I didn't know, but you can't use those uh, the Roven or King Motor pull starts. The, the smaller engine pull starts, the, the Chinese clone ones, they don't work. They just break. The, the compression in, in this engine, it, it, they just can't hang. So I broke two of them in a matter of 24 hours, which if you know this platform means a whole hell of a lot of work just to get the damn pull start off. And in the end, I had to just change the flywheel cover and put the Roven one on there and um, so that I could use the G320A, I was running out of pull starts. I didn't have any left other than that uh, easy start one that I have there, that Roven one, which requires me to change the flywheel out, uh, which I have the flywheel that goes with it. It's on the King Motor engine, but I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to take the flywheel off this brand new motor. You should see the gap between the uh, the coil and the flywheel. It's, it's amazing. I don't think I could get that good of a gap again. Not to mention, I just don't want to open up a can of worms because so far things have been a nightmare and I'm on a tight schedule. So I use this pull stock cover, uh, the flywheel cover, the Roven one, I get the G321 mounted up. Mind you, this took, this, was, this happened over the course of two days of me bringing my truck all the way to work, after work, being excited, driving over to the parking lot, thinking I'm gonna do some quarter throttle circles, get it broken in, go to start it, <laughs> pull stop broke, right? Pack it up, drive it home. Figure, you know, what do I got? What am I gonna do now? I'm, I'm dicking around with pull stock, you know, pull stocks for three days straight. Time's running out. Finally, I get the G320 pull stock in there. I get it to work yesterday, and um, no, the day before yesterday, I got it to work. And I, sure enough, it fires right up. That G320 pull stock is, is way beefier. From what I understand, if you're gonna do something different than the G320, the C, the genuine CY pull stocks will work with the 32C cc engine it's it's a big enough and beefy enough to work so unless you want to of course spend some money buy an fid or a turtle racing so yeah it fires right up but within a matter of seconds i know there's a problem because i go to take off and it just revs and then it catches and then i think everything's all right then i go to slow down and i realize the clutch is sticking and i'm like you son of a bitch right i had to use that stupid friggin clutch should have just used the stock clutch. Well, this clutch, right before I switched, or when I switched it from the King Motor engine, which, by the way, it was working perfectly fine, I, I, I screwed in the grub screws all the way, the set screws, so that I could get a higher RPM out of it. Well, long story short, that must have screwed something up in here. It didn't like it, or either that, one of the springs got screwed up, because as soon as it did grab, it revved way too high, but then it did grab, it got stuck, and I couldn't get it unstuck. And I, of course, was out in the parking lot. I, I was there. I was like, screw it. I just drove it in circles. I basically let it idle in circles, kind of just, you know, roll at, at three grand or whatever it was doing. And um, 
20 minutes later, I was aggravated. I'm like, fuck this. I pack it up. I go home and I remember how much of a nightmare this can possibly this can be to get off. The uh, the clutch itself has threads inside it so that you can use a bigger um, a bigger bolt, allow that bolt to to kind of meet up with the edge of the um, crankshaft and then start to back this off. But last thing I want to do is let a bigger bolt smash up against the the tip possibly ruined the threads on my my brand new you know crankshaft so i got it off but uh I, you know of course i did i get it home though and i realized i don't want to take it off i try to back the screws back out i leave it in there and i try to back the screws back out and i take it to work today and it's still, it's sure enough, it's still, uh, it's still catching. It's still, um, you know, it's stuck. So I drove it around for a couple minutes and um, I called it a day and I told myself if I couldn't get it out and then the factory clutch in and everything in work in order tonight, I'm not going to the track. Um, but it looks like I'm going to go because I was able to get it off. I was able to get the factory clutch in there. There's a NOAA clutch that came with it. Of course, I had to clean every single bolt, which, by the way, if you've taken an engine out four or five times in a matter of seven days, every single time you have to clean your bolts. I mean, I just was watching Botagel's video uh, this afternoon, and he reminded us, guys, clean your shit, clean your bolts. So I'm having to clean Loctite off these bolts day in, day out, right, every night. And I have a, you know, guys, my schedule sucks. I get out of work at 6 o'clock. I don't get home till close to 7 we got to get the baby, you know, in the in the tub. My wife works. We got to get her fed. We got to get kids fed. By the time I get out here, it's 9, 10 o'clock at night. I'm working until 1.30 in the morning. Dude, I'm falling asleep at work. You know what I mean? So I'm going to make this video short and sweet. I'm going to try anyway because I have to get some sleep. I'm all wired up on Monster right now. But, um, so yeah, the I got batteries charging, discharging and charging. I've been trying to really take care of this battery. It's been a good pack to me and... I have a 4500 uh, King Motor pack in there in the in my bag that's good to go and ready for you know ready for tomorrow. This bag is packed to the gills with everything I need, believe it or not, and uh, that eliminates the need to have to carry that orange toolbox. So I just bring this clever made crate here. It kind of it's one of those collapsible crates. It's packed up with a bunch of extra stuff, you know, A arms, front and rear drill my camera stuff which by the way i did get my clone camera working it it looks like i just um one of the batteries is junk so it came with two batteries one of them is junk it won't take a charge so i tossed that battery and i got the uh, camera working so hopefully i'm going to get some good footage tomorrow um yeah so i got all that i got everything ready to go there but as far as the truck is concerned i didn't want to take that stupid big you know, big speed clutch off, so I backed the bolts back out. Like I said, that didn't work. But I also noticed that the damn diff was puking fluid everywhere. So I had to take the diff out last night. Well, I was out here till God knows how, you know, what time, trying to get that diff out of that, um, out of that truck because, and I hope I can find it, one of the diff bolts stripped. And when I say it's stripped, I mean it's stripped, guys. I couldn't even get it out with the kit that I have. I had to drill it with, um, with some titanium bits that I had. Had to drill it to the point where it was, there was nothing left of the head. And then try to get in there with that speed out kit. Or whatever the hell it's called. I can't remember what it's called. But the, um, the uh, kit, it took me an hour and a half to get that one bolt out. Because the this diff just wanted to be a nightmare. When I finally got it out, I realized it was my fault. I'm watching a video. It says not to fill the diff past the crosshairs. Well, I did. And so that, of course, was part of the issue. The other part was, is when I originally took this diff out because it, had, it was starting to spit little flecks of like black shit and it was empty when I took it out, I noticed that the little seal, the one that sticks up inside the, um, the spur gear, and you, you, you have that little plate, that little um, washer type plate that sits on top of it. And then you slide the diff cup through and then you put the pin through. Well, that seal was kind of chewed up on one side. So I tried to, you know, I put it aside and I had a seal that looked similar. I put it in there 
guys, that seal by that when I took it apart last night, it was it was floating in the inside the uh, spur gear recess where it's supposed to be in there nice and tight. It was basically just floating. So I don't even I don't know. Maybe it was too late. Maybe it shrunk. I, I, maybe I'm just an absolute idiot because looking at it when I took it apart last night, I'm like, why the hell would I ever put this in? You know, in this thing, it's clearly it don't fit. Well, I put the stock one back in. I flipped it around because one side was a little chewed up. And I ended up noticing that there was still a little play even after I put the pin through. I had this um, Team Fast Eddie Pro shim kit. Comes with a couple different sizes. I put a shim underneath the, the washer that the diff cup slides through and then you slide the pin through. And I eliminated the play that it has. So I'm hoping it worked. And, and the little bit of runtime that I did put on it today, even though the clutch was still sticking, there's no fluid anywhere. Uh, I just I just sprayed it down with some air because it was grass all over it. The um, the diff seems to be okay. Of course, I have a new bolt in there. Yada yada yada. The uh, clutch. I got that big speed clutch off this engine the same way I took it off the other engine. Luckily, it was nice and easy. I took the the housing bolts out. The housing's moving around behind the clutch. I turned the housing to the side, wrapped a, a thick towel around it, and tapped it with a, a rubber hammer. Just tapped it. Boom, the clutch popped off. So I have the stock Zenoa in there with an 8,000 spring. And um, she's as far as I can see, she's ready to go. The G320 pull start's good. My outer wears are good. Uh, my... my um, my vent's good. I'm running dual vents. I put a little tiny bit of uh, air filter foam inside that hole because I had drilled that hole out and put a set screw in there. So I put a little bit of um, a foam in there just because the hole's a little too big. And I did put the stock gas cap system, vent system, back inside this. So I'm basically running a dual vent system. And if I keep this pinched between here, it'll make sure that it keeps it at the highest point, you know, above the gas tank. So I didn't have any issues there. The motor seemed to be running good. The cob settings when I got it were definitely way too rich. This thing was puking oil out of the pipe. It was dripping oil here within a matter of 10 minutes. I was like, what the fuck? I thought they set them to the stock settings. They were like way rich. It was like two turns out each one. So I set them back to the stock settings. Of course, that solved the oil issue. Once I cleaned things up a bit, it was starting to spit oil all over my new engine. Oh my God. So yeah, I mean, I'm like... I'm taking this up here with a with a bent um, a bent uh, rear shock brace. I took this one off because it's bent so bad that if I try to put the cage on this one, it twists the cage so much that it doesn't want to bolt up. And at that track, you have to bolt up. I know a lot of people don't use the bolts when they're just you know, running a field or whatever, which is probably you know fine. But you have to bolt up at that track. Not to mention it'll it'll keep your cage in better shape I think anyway mine basically fell apart well who knows maybe that's because it's a king motor cage maybe a low C1 would have lasted me longer I know you're looking at this thing like what the hell so this is what I had up my sleeve I I basically had broken everything in the back of this cage and I decided you know what screw this I'm gonna I'm gonna cut it all off lighten it up a bit take off the rear fenders and I'm gonna run this bitch like this and see uh, see how I like it. Might look a little funny. In the end, I think I like it, guys. Oh, check this m little mod out. If you guys have this cage, I know you've had a problem with those things snapping. I wrap, I crisscross two zip ties super tight, put the stock bolt back through it, and man, is it tight. Of course, you could also put some glue or shoe glue in there, but. That's two zip ties crisscrossed, and it's holding them tight. Both of them are snapped. So for now, that's going to do the trick, but check this out. I mean, it's not the best looking thing, but I'm kind of digging it, dude. Not to mention, I'm going up there to race low C5Bs. There's only two guys that bring trucks, and so, yeah, we do race some trucks, but this thing's kind of like a 5TB, you know what I mean? I was even thinking about buying the wing kit for the back of it. And I was like, screw that. It's just going to break. I'm just wasting my money. But yeah, so I'm bringing it up there like that. Kind of goofy looking, but I watched it run today. 
you know, even though the clutch was sticking and it looked pretty damn cool. Not to mention it, that engine has so much power. I couldn't believe the difference just in quarter throttle, how much power and how easy it moves the truck, you know, compared to the King Motor 35.5 engine that was in it. And that's a nice engine, that King Motor engine. That, that thing goes good. But this engine is like night and day. I mean, you can feel it just in the compression alone. Pull stop, that those damn pull stops just basically fell apart. They couldn't even hang. And you can feel it when you go to pull it, you know? So yeah, I'm really stoked. I'm pumped. I'm just hoping everything works out, guys. I, I got, I'm now probably down to about six and a half hours that I can get some sleep. I saw my wife just texted me a second ago asking me what the verdict was. She's wondering if I'm going to go. So um, yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, I know I probably missed a bunch of stuff, but um, but this is it. This is what I was able to get accomplished, uh, you know, in seven to ten days or whatever the case may be at two, three hours at a time. Um, so I'm not having a chance to run it, of course. I'm going to have to bring it up there. And like I said, I just got the stock clutch put in it. And um, I know the diff's okay. That whole situation worked out good. But... Um, you know, as long as nothing else is wrong, barring nothing else is, is wrong, I solved the clutch issue, so we should be good to go. I'm just going to say a prayer and, and hope for the best because it'll be a really disappointing ride home tomorrow if I have a bunch of issues or have some type of issue. And You know, the, the guys up there, Chris, I can't say enough about him. He's a super nice guy. Chris G, he's always offering to help me out. But last thing I want to do is take away from his time, you know, so... Wish me luck, guys. I'll try to get some footage. I got to get some sleep and um, set an alarm so I can keep an eye on this battery just because I'm a freak like that. And I'll worry about it too much. It's already on the charge. I have it set so that it um, cools down for five minutes before it goes from discharge to charge. And it, it's, it's making good progress. It's only been 21, yeah, 21 minutes on the charge. I have it charging at 3 amps, of course. Battery is ice cold. This is a really nice pack. You know, for, for a NIMA pack, anyway. You know? The, uh... Yeah, so it's almost there, to be honest with you. By the time I actually lay down, I should be able to come out here, and it should be good to go. Alright, so thanks again for watching, guys. I appreciate all the comments, the help, the advice. I appreciate your videos. This Most of the time, that's what keeps me going. And, and I, you know, to be honest, I always learn something new or remember something that I forgot. Um, but I still continue to make mistakes and I still continue to deal with bullshit. So I think it's just a side effect of this hobby and, you know, dealing with these things. They can be, uh, they can definitely get you get under your skin if you're trying to move too quick and trying to make a deadline, especially with limited time and uh, in limited money, you know what I mean? So just take it slow and take it from me. If you're, if you're not sure, find a video, ask for help, you know, do whatever you got to do. Try not to put yourself in a position where you're, you're you know, you're, you're trying to race and, and trying to beat the clock. So thanks for watching. I'll see you guys soon.